listening to the Riverdale Rewind on Charlotte CW. Hey, welcome to the Riverdale Rewind. I'm Nomi with Tanya, and we are going to recap the entire show, plus give you some of the insight of what we think is going to be happening next episode. Now, Jess Jess usually does these episodes with us, but she is in Scotland and Ireland. I'm jealous. Right? <laughs> she wants to be here. She Probably. does. Probably not. <laughs> She's vacationing. Come on. Vacationing. Come on. So last night, uh, you were live tweeting through the WCCB Charlotte app, and there was a lot going on. Make sure you follow it, because Tanya will be live tweeting every single episode. Um, we're going to start off with What the Pop, and with What the Pop, it's what blew our mind, whether it's a character or a scene or something that happened that just blew our mind. What do you think, Tanya? Well, obviously at the the end, I don't want to give away anything. No, Maybe give it away. There's give spoilers. Away. Okay. There's spoilers in this. Sorry. Just yeah. giving you a heads up. There will be spoilers. So at the end, you know, at the very end, it seems like at the end of these episodes are the most shocking for me because the serial killer is on a rampage and he kills, or so-called kills, right. um, another, you know, person. Uh, so. There's two people in the car. Yes. It's Moose and... Mitch. Yes. And Moose always brags pretty much in several episodes that he's this big guy, okay? Mm-hmm. That he can handle a lot, he can take a lot, and uh, he, I noticed that he kind of covers her, and... Right. So my theory for that section is that she's still alive. I don't know if he is. I'm not sure. I mean, the guy is, first of all, the scene was a little bit odd because they're in the car right. doing the jingle jangle. Right. <laughs> Which is a new drug introduced in this episode. Right. So they're already a little bit slow to go. But if I know I'm in the car and I see a guy with a ski mask and a gun coming up to the car, I'm going to start the engine and probably go. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so they, he doesn't do that and then he just kind of gets shot. And now we don't know where he gets shot. He could, like you said, just be injured. So. Right. Like Archie's dad, he got shot on the side, survived it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we don't know what the status is on that. My what the pop moment was the entire Lodge family. Right. Oh my goodness. Okay, Very first. Nasty. Right. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize how evil they were. This took it to a whole nother level. A whole new level. And even Veronica, I felt like really stepped up to the plate because she uh, she's trying to change the ways of her family. She's trying to be the good person. Yeah, she wants to have a normal family. Yeah, and. Her parents are crooked! They are very crooked. So the moment I'm thinking of in particular is uh, when her mom takes the blame for the letter. They're saying, I wrote the letter that her dad sent to her, and that just blew Veronica's mind. But that really didn't happen. It really didn't. So <laughs> she told her mom, you know, I mean, the whole thing was a little chaotic. Right! Um, because it just is kind of... First of all, the dinner, they're always at a dinner at, at their house, and it feels like they're in a five-star restaurant to me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, with the fire going on, right. the drinks, she drank the Cristal. She drank the Cristal, so it feels a little godfatherish, yes. you know, that kind of family. So, um, yeah, that definitely is very shocking. They're very nasty, and they have not sharpened their claws all the way. I know they have some more dirty stuff coming our way. Yeah, and... I mean, what the red flag should have been when she brought up, like, well, I wrote the letter. Well, but did you? Did you buy me these pearls then, too? Right. Because the necklace came out of that as well. So, oh, right. yeah. Yeah, you know, that. so there's so many questions, but I felt like that scene just was the tip of the iceberg of what kind of level of evil there mm-hmm. is in that family. Yes. Um, but going on to the casting recap, because there is a new character that we were introduced to, and that is the lawyer, the Serpent's lawyer. Britt Morgan is the actress, and she's going as Penny Peabody. And um, that I was not expecting her to come up, to be honest with you, because you're in a tattoo shop. And you're like, right. okay, where is this leading? Where is this going? What am I doing? First of all, you have, you're a lawyer, 
but you have a shop. I mean, your office is in the tattoo shop. Right. So, and the backs are, I don't know, red flags should have been all over that for Jughead, but you know, it wasn't. Right. <laughs> and not only that, but you walk into her office and you see all of the documents all around her. So, all around. So the evidence is not really sealed up. Anybody could break in, well, if they want to, like, you know, go against the Southside Serpents. Like, that's, you know, territory. Danger zone. Right, yeah. you know, but her stuff is not locked up at all. Not at all. And it's just a little, it felt odd to me. First of all, to have that, her office in the tattoo parlor, and then she's saying that she's still a serpent, shows her tattoo. Mm -hmm. It just was a lot of red flags. I thought it was interesting, though, that the Southside Serpents uh, did pay for her education. Yes. Her Robert certification. <laughs> right. Which is really, really yeah. crazy. Um, now, Penny Peabody, she actually was in the Little Archie series, the comic books, and uh, which means that there's going to be a new character coming up pretty soon because she is associated with Fangs. Now, Fangs, in the Little Archie series, he uh, actually used to beat up Reggie, Archie, and Jughead. So, which brings up the theory, you know, is Fangs going to be brought up and is he going to be the hooded character? Yeah, that's a <laughs> I mean, I know that's a yeah, lot of information. Not that I like did some hardcore digging up and like googling and like searching last night after the episode of like who is Penny Peabody like who is she where did she come from um, so things is going to be a character most likely coming up right but if you notice and I don't know if you're doing this at all whenever there is a character it doesn't matter if we've seen them first season or second season I'm looking at their eyes the entire time to see if it's the hood character. Oh uh, yeah, with the because you can that's all you could see. Right. It's the the five year old cutout of the hood. Right. So, but Penny Peabody, would you say she's probably like late twenties? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she's pretty young. The hooded guy, the black hood. What's his name again? Black hooded. The man with the hood. Like, what are they calling him? Again? <laughs> They're calling him a name. Right. It deals with the hooded character, the Hood of Killer. I, I, we should probably know we this. We should know. It'll, 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 it'll come, come out next week. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they revealed the official name to that um, in, in next week's episode. We saw mm -hmm. that in the preview. Um, but Fangs would have been around her age. So he might be ruled out because the guy's eyes are a lot older, it looks like. Yeah. And then, I mean, how is Fangs, because I'm not very familiar with Fangs, so how right. is, maybe, because the hooded guy seems to look muscular, right? masculine, like he's like a big beefy guy. So and that's know. what the character is described as, is Fangs. Okay. Um, that he is a bigger guy, that he was a bully, and would beat up Reggie, Archie, and Jughead, but he would also have, he had some crooked teeth as well, which we don't see his teeth under the hood. Right. But if he is Penny Peabody's, like, age range, the hooded guy would be too old. Because yeah. you could tell the wrinkles. Yeah. And it, it seems like, I mean, Archie is very paranoid, because it seems like he's thinking every, the hooded guy is going after everyone he knows, or is associated with. Right. So... Um, just meaning that kind of, I don't, maybe things is, so, I mean, I don't know how he would be brought up right. or how they would introduce him. They're obviously going to introduce him. Well, and but. there's another person, um, that we still have to introduce, um, that hasn't been brought up, but, uh, the Cooper's son. Yes. He will be, I think it's mid season. He will be brought up. I believe that's what I read. And. I mean, but how old would he be? Probably the same age range as in the 20s, right? In the 20s. Yeah. So this character and he seemed is cool. very, like I said before, he was little Abercrombie model, so he seems very skinny. <laughs> and um, so I don't know if he would fit the profile. Okay, so <laughs> cross him out. Yeah. Fangs is probably cross out. He's an iffy. You know, um, I saw actually a, a meme going around that uh, Betty Cooper's dad might be it. You know, I was thinking about that on the way here, because I was trying to think of who is the killer. Right. And um, Naturally, you have to. Right. My first 
thoughts keep going back to Betty Cooper's dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, where's he been? Yeah, I have no idea. He hasn't really been in, he was in a little bit of last week's episode, but not really not saying much. much. And this week he wasn't in there at all. So, right. what's going and on with him? He would, let's see, and he would know about the teacher, Miss Grundy. Right. He would know that because naturally he's married to, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Mrs. Cooper. So she tells everybody everything. Yes. Um, she knows everything. He would know the history with the cherry blossoms, everything. He pretty much would know everything. So that is a good theory that he might be the killer. Yeah. I, I, let's keep it back in the books. Because, I, I mean, I agree, too, that he's got something going on. He maybe has something out for Archie. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know how Archie keeps connecting the dots of that the killer is going after people he knows. And I, and I get that's what he's thinking, but how is he... How is he going to connect the dots on this last one? Yeah. Because they didn't really interact that much. Um, Archie With and Moose and, Moose and... I mean, just playing football. Yeah. And then the random student. What was her name again? I keep on forgetting her name. The Midge. Midge, yeah. Yeah, Midge. This is the first time we've seen Midge. Right. So, um... Is there more to that? Is there... I don't know. But here, here's also another theory of mine before we get into Jughead journals where we talk about what the status is with Jughead. Um, last season, towards the end, it was all like, okay, you know, fathers killing sons. That's a big theme. It was brought up in the very beginning, first episode of the season. Are they going to now change that and now it's going to be sons killing fathers? Should we be thinking about maybe a possible son, an older son, right. killing off... Fathers? <laughs> that yeah. just, I know that sounds weird, but it's, it's a theory because they keep on bringing up fathers killing sons. Are we going to be seeing the opposite here happen? It could be. Um, like Archie's going to like lose it from taking all these drugs and energy and drinks. Not and, sleeping. Yeah, is he going to lose it and it, You know, maybe he could because... I don't know. First of all, Archie with the gun, because he now has right. a gun and not a baseball bat, and being sleep deprived and trying to do these drugs and energy drinks, just, I mean, that's just not going to end well. No, because <laughs> look at Reggie came up in the back door mm-hmm. and he tackled him right away. Didn't even question it. He saw Hood, yeah. which, I mean, everybody would have done the same thing. Come on, let's be real. Well, I don't know what Reggie was thinking. I mean, his. Dad, that was cruel. That was very cruel. I thought I was like, let's just go ahead and pull a prank on our on our friend that his dad just got shot. <laughs> right, and, and see how he reacts. And he's already scared. Like, he's already scared. Not sleeping. So he didn't even think twice about it. He automatically thought it was the killer. It tackled him and started beating him up. And Reggie was like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" It was like, a prank. Yeah, exactly. So imagine now him sleep deprived on energy drinks, now with a gun, could this just lead to a possible incident with his dad? I I can see that. With all those (laughs) factors, I can see that coming into play. Um, Speaking of, if he's on such high alert, I mean, there's a lot of things that Archie might need to do a little better, like lock the doors. Yeah, change the locks. Right. (laughs) Because Jughead just walks in and about nearly gets you know, clocked the first, like, That's five right. minutes of the show. So. Yeah, he almost got hit pretty hard, too, with a right. baseball bat. Um, let's go on to Jughead Journals. This is going to be a part of the show where we talk about Jughead, this latest condition that he's in, the status he's in, what he's experiencing, um, because Jughead is really important to the series, first of all. Yes. Um, right now, I'm thinking... Is he going to be forced to be a Southside Serpent because he owes Penny Peabody? I think you're, I think so. He's going to be forced to do He's it. He won't have forced. any choice. No, because um, Penny helped save, you know, his dad, mm-hmm. gave him that advice. First of all, you don't take the advice from a serpent. You should have just paid the woman and left. Right. <laughs> but but, but Jughead is poor. He has no money. He has no money. Yeah, so he kind of had to do what he had to do. And now, I mean, he's like living on the streets. 
-hmm. So he's, I don't know how he's paying the bills or how he's doing all that, to be honest, in the real life. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> How's he paying for all this stuff? But um, I think he does probably, it's going to become a serpent in some point in time. And that's going to give a relationship kind of dynamic for Betty and him. That's because right. Betty doesn't want him to become a serpent. Yeah, she doesn't want that at all. And she, you know, has even voiced the fact that she is strongly against the servants, even though she is all about equality. Right, right. It's going to be really interesting to see that relationship. Yeah, so I think some things are coming their way in their relationship, some hardship and some decisions that Chuck Hutt's going to have to really make, mm -hmm. whether he wants to stay in this relationship with Betty or is he going to go by his father's footsteps kind of, and right. follow in line. Yeah, but he sees how difficult his dad has lived, you know. They and might force them, though. They might. You, you did this, I did this for you. Right, too. and we're going to have to do it this way, or you're going to waterboard them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be scary because maybe they'll threaten the life of Betty. Right, they could do that. So, uh, I don't know. So, we're definitely going to want to hear from you on that one. And MVP of the week, what do you think? Who is the all-star? All-star, no hands down, Betty Cooper. Yes, I totally agree with that. <laughs> Damn. She is trying to be Wonder Woman. She is trying to save Pops and the shop and get, you know, um, FP out and make sure that he has his rights back. I mean, she's all over the place. She's all, she's trying to save everyone. And notice that Archie wasn't <laughs> sleeping? Yes. Uh, yeah, she even noticed that. She was like, I noticed this. he's not been laying in his bed. Which means <laughs> Betty Cooper is out creeping in his windows. Right. Like, there's something going on there. She's but <laughs> have feelings for him. Yeah. Which Jess and I already talked about. We think that's just the, the four relationships, they're all going to intertwine at some point. We no! That's, don't what, say that's that. what I think. No, I love, like the new I love how it is. Everybody kind of gets with everybody. <laughs> no, I like the way the couples are right now. Oh, I do too. I personally do too. I hope they don't do that. But the way it's going, she's already creeping in his window, being a stalker. Yes, it's a little, it's a little much. Well, well with her being, um, the reason I think that she is definitely the MVP is because, I mean, the darker side, she really is the queen bee. Yeah, she really is. I mean, she is, and she's really intense, she's really emotional, and she knows everybody. Like, she gets invested in people's lives. So she noticed when Archie's not sleeping. Yes. She noticed when something is not going right with her boyfriend and is stepping in and asking questions and mm -hmm. helping Veronica with her relationship with, her with Archie. Relationship. Yep. So, I mean, she's everywhere, but yet her mom is always against her. Always against her. It's really harsh. It is, it is, but I I think we're seeing foreshadowing a little bit of the darker side of Betty. Um, I think, I mean, we all know that the Coopers have some skeletons in their closet of their own. So I think a little bit of that is coming out more. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, I think in season one, we remember Betty talking about there's some things inside of her that yeah, like because of the markings right. of her hand, yeah. and she would automatically cut herself with mm -hmm. the nails with that the she nails. has. So she has some kind of problems of her own that she's dealing with, and kind of demons are kind of setting out a little bit more mm -hmm. for her. That's fine. Her and Veronica both have dark sides that are really coming out this season so far, mm -hmm. and it seems like the guys are shining this light of, you know, goodness. Yeah, and yeah, you know, that's funny that you mentioned that because I kind of was thinking the women of Riverdale are, are vicious. Yes. <laughs> you have the Blossoms. Both those ladies yeah. are extreme. Um, where, uh, what happened to um, Betty's sister? We haven't seen her actually in a little while. Um, oh, yeah, we haven't seen her. At all, actually. And she's pregnant. We're going to be seeing... With the twins. Is yeah. She with twins? Mm -hmm. Or supposedly. Supposedly. Yeah, so we need to see them, or see her. What was her name? I can't think of it off the top of my head, if you guys can. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jess is probably shaking her head right now, being right. like, come on, ladies. You should know this. <laughs> 
Um, it's Betty and what is her name? Is it Penny? It's not Penny. I think it's Penny Peabody. Hmm. We'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should really probably find out right now. But um, let's see. But that's what I think so too. I think that you know, she's get uh, Betty is getting a lot darker this season. Although Cole does not like. Cole Sprouse does not like for the season to be called darker, as we mentioned before. Right. Um, he doesn't think that it's darker, but how can it not be? Yeah. So. It's clearly darker. It's clearly. Polly! Polly! I knew yes. with the P. Yes, we were close. Polly, of course. <laughs> we're going to be seeing her hopefully um, sometime in the season as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, but other than that, we are seeing Jingle Jangle, which is a new um, new drug. Maybe it's the dealer that is the killer. So it's a Jingle Jangle. Just correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not up on my new drugs. So I think they made it up for the series. Right, but is it like, I mean, was it in a pixie stick? It looked, it looked like, like it was crushed up, yes. Okay. It looks like it's a candy. And from the way it reacts to people um, using people characters that are using it, it may be like speed or okay. some kind of upper. Yeah, okay. Um, it makes you stay up at night. I remember Reggie for days. saying that. Yeah. yeah, supposed to stay up for days. So I'm assuming it's an upper mm -hmm. and um, it's a new drug on the scene. So we have that. Bang is a possible person that we're going to be seeing in the near future in the series. Mm -hmm. um, Polly Cooper, we still have to find out what's going on with her, and the status. Baby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Miss Grundy's ex, that's been rumoring all over social media on where is he going to come up. Well, here's my thing. When, they're in this, when Archie was talking to the sheriff about, you know, Miss Grundy's ex, yeah. And he was being a little paranoid about, like, why is everyone, why is the man with the mask coming after everyone he knows? And he kind of just, I mean, the sheriff says, you know, Miss Grundy's ex has a, a a strong alibi. Right. And then Archie just kind of blows that off. Right. And just kind of is like, well, yeah, maybe I am being a little paranoid. Right. That would just make me think, like, second guess myself. You right. Know, you're like, I am right. There is something going on. And do some investigating yourself because right. Archie doesn't let things slide either. He does not investigating himself too. Well, as we yeah. Saw. But we do know that he's not a very good um, looking for the man. We did see the awful flyer. Yeah. He was <laughs> I don't know he what. Stayed he stayed up hours that. drawing that. <laughs> yes, the worst flyer ever. Yes. Have you seen this man? And he has the mask with the holes. I don't know. With I, green I eyes. See, with green eyes. I see that walking around every day. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's what I've been focused on this season the most is like concentrating on everybody's eyes. Like, so then I'm like, ooh, that could be close. That could be close. That's a good idea. I need um, to do that. So, you know, that's what I've been doing. If you have theories, make sure you comment down below. Uh, other than that, we have uh, the promos and stories and notes of everything that we talked about here today under our show notes. You can find it at wccbcharlotte.com. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button on this video. And we're going to be on iTunes here shortly as well. So make sure you subscribe on that. Thank you so much for hanging out this Welcome. morning and talking Riverdale. I love talking Riverdale. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> and she's going to be live tweeting every episode, so make sure you follow WCCV Charlotte on Facebook, on Twitter, all of that. And what's your handle, too? It's Tanya012612. <laughs> you got to think about it. A bunch it. of numbers. I know. It, it, it's a bunch of, my name with a bunch of numbers. <laughs> there we go. We'll make sure to post it uh, down below as well. Thanks for joining, and we will see you next week. Bye. You're listening to the Riverdale Rewind on Charlotte CW.